Our text for this morning's sermon is taken from the Gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, the season of Epiphany started with the account of the wise men being called out of Babylon. These men who had walked in darkness or in the confusion and diversity of pagan gods had seen a great light, the light of Christ. Likewise, the Corinthians in our epistle who had walked in darkness and the confusion division and quarreling about who to follow had seen a great light, the light of Christ that united them to be eventually of the same mind and judgment. Today we hear how Jesus called his disciples to follow him, to join him in calling all people out of the darkness and confusion of Babylon and into the light of his life and peace. His message, their message, our message is one and the same. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's with Jesus who comes to be with us right here and now. Repent. This message applies to you and me. Repent. You know why? Because like those before us, we walk in the same darkness of the Babylonian confusion the confusion that somehow all authority in heaven and on earth lies within us. In my, to put it the secular way today, my expressive individualism, that all authority lies within us, that we are the gate of the gods, to give you a definition of the name Babylon, gate of the gods. That's what's going on with us too. But we need to repent because the source of light and life is found not in us, but in Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen from the dead. You see, the truth about us is this. We live in deep darkness. Deep darkness. All of us do, and we all get conned by it, even as Christians, all the time. The depth of this darkness is such that we, we've come to believe that, that darkness is light, that male is female, that man is God. That's the big one, isn't it? That man, human beings, that we're God. Wow. Listen to what the Lord says. Listen to what the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah to Babylon. These words are addressed to Babylon. Listen. You felt secure in your wickedness. <laughs> you were secure in that, in the darkness. And said, no one sees me. Ugh. Your wisdom and your knowledge, he says, has led you astray. And then you said in your heart, you said in your heart, I am, I am, and there is no one besides me. Really? Well, like the Babylonians, you feel secure in your wickedness. You think that no one sees you. 
but that is not true. Jesus said, nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. Scary, isn't it? But that's the truth. Like the Babylonians, our wisdom and knowledge has led us astray to the point of thinking that we don't need God or even <laughs> that he doesn't even exist. As the Apostle Paul points out, quote, claiming to be wise, we become fools and exchange the glory of God for images or, in today's language, narratives that we build for ourselves as if they were real. He goes on, we, we exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature, rather than the creator. Like the Babylonians, you say, I am, and there is no one besides me. You claim that you evolved yourself into being, so says the faulty science. That's what you claim, even though you didn't even exist before that. And you claim that you can save the world and listen to all the politicians, listen to everybody's, oh, we got to save the world and we're the chosen, we're going to save the world and we can't even save ourselves. Have you ever thought of that? Why would I trust in you? You're dying. Wow. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Jesus says this of those who believe in themselves. You ready? Out of the mouth of Jesus Christ, and him crucified and risen from the dead. This is what he says about all who believe in themselves. You are of your father, the devil. He is a liar. He's a liar and the father of lies. Okay, that's enough of that, isn't it? For the, you students, you, you uh, Lutheran school students, that would be the law. You ready for the gospel? That liar is defeated. Jesus Christ has defeated him by taking in our sin, our suffering, our death, and burying it in his death, and he has risen victorious over it. And now he shines the light of his forgiveness, life, and peace into our hearts and lives. For now, now the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in deep darkness on them has light shined. You see, God is the only I am, the only one who was, is, and always will be forever. God is the only I am. And he has become enfleshed in Jesus so that you can be with him and live with him. He's enfleshed in the body and the flesh and blood of Jesus in order to set us free from sin and death. So God in Christ has called you out of Babylon. That's what he's invaded this world to do, to call you out of the, your darkness, the confusion of life without God. And he's doing that again today, this morning, calling you out of Babylon, out of the darkness of sin and death. He says this, the one who said, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise again, and then did it with over 500 witnesses, the only one who has the credibility to say this, he says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am the door of the sheep. <sighs> and he opened that door for you and me. It opened for him when he fulfilled the Father's will of taking on our sin and death, suffering, dying, rising victorious over it. And the door opens for you 
through your baptism into Christ. Heaven opened when you were baptized in Christ, and later on to this morning, heaven will open for Charles, and he will be put on the boat of the church, a boat, boat that sails out of the darkness of Babylon and into the dawn of a new day, the day of life together with God and one another throughout all eternity. That day never ends. The day that God has won for us in Christ to be lived with him and one another in paradise. Where you sit, that's called the nave. It's Latin for boat. You're in the boat. And this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be. And Jesus gives you peace in this boat. The peace of knowing that there's a place you're going. It's crystal clear. It's the place that God has promised to take you. The one who always says what he does and does what he says. Into life with him and one another throughout all eternity. I am the bread of life, he says. Eat this bread and you shall live forever. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. That's what the Lord of heaven and earth says. <laughs> Great stuff. I'm the vine, you are the branches, he says. You're not the vine, you're the branch. You can't live without God. You can't live without him. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, he says. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's why we have a school. So that our children abide in his word. That's what Jesus says, abide or live in my word. And he says, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. We teach them to live according to God's word, to be shaped and formed by that word. So that instead of groping around in the darkness of Babylon, the Babylon of this world, they reflect the light of Christ in whatever vocation they end up serving in. That's why we celebrate Lutheran Schools Week. Because Jesus, Jesus said what he did and did what he said. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Whoever fo follows me, he says, will not walk in the darkness but we'll have the light of life. As we hear from the apostle, if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We just did that, and that's what God is doing right here and now. He knows everything about you, all of your sin. He knew that before sending Jesus, and he comes to make it right with you through the forgiveness of sins. You know why? Because he loves you. He loves you not because of what you do or don't do, he loves you because you're his. And he'll stop at nothing to make sure that you stay there, stay there with him. Because he is the only I am. There is no other gods. No other God beside him. So repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is here in Christ. As the sunflower turns its face to the sun for light and growth, so... Repent. Turn from your sinful selves and turn to the face to the face of God in flesh in Jesus. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day, no matter what you've done or left undone in life, he comes not to condemn, but to save to call you out of Babylon and to bathe in his light and his peace. God has called us out of the darkness and confusion of Babylon, all of us, and into the light and clarity of Jesus Christ. In him, as you just sang, there is no darkness at all. And you? You, as the apostle reminds you, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession <laughs> that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light.
Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.